everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dan. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the book, The Unremembered, by Peter Aurelian. And this is the author's definitive edition. Um, I'm wearing sunglasses inside. Yes, I am, because it's morning in India and the sun is coming up over the horizon there, just outside the window, and it's shooting right into my eye. So, I'm wearing sunglasses for a bit. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back. Um, you know, there's no good way of saying this, so let's just get it out there. Uh, this book, it's not a good book, okay? Uh, the author's trying a standard uh, fantasy um, design for the book, which is through line and parallels which where you have a strong centralized character and a group of friends come together and then they get separated after their inciting incident and you have different stories going down the length uh, to the conclusion. But you need to have a very strong central character and storyline for something like that. And here you just end up going, well, which one of these characters is the main storyline? And um, it's just a jumble of folks kind of wandering around aimlessly without really rhyme or reason. That's what you get out of it. Now, if that was all that was an issue with it, it probably would be okay. I probably could have lived through it. Um, but it had some other major, major problems. For example, odd character names. Uh, these are like what you might expect, you know, when you were 12 years old or something and playing uh, D&D &D and you're trying to come up with cool sounding names. Uh, but they're really just variations on uh, regular names and it drive, drives you crazy. I understand the desire uh, because Tolkien had this naming scheme that was really cool, but if you remember, he based it off of Old English, and it made sense. Here, it's just cheap. Um, for example, Selenia, Wendra, come on, can you just call her Wendy, uh, Tan, and the one that really drove me crazy was Seenbe. Seenbe? Seenbean? What the heck? Uh, just, ugh. Anyway, it seems like a cheap attempt to make this into grand fantasy. And it's not just names of people, it's names of places. Same deal. Uh, also, they had random important events. These events aren't explained, they're just kind of thrown in there. And it's like watching a, if you go watch like a, I don't know, a superhero movie or a science fiction movie, and the director seems more interested in having cool looking scenes, and the, you know, the whole movie stops and they have this slow motion scene and everybody stands around going, look how cool I look right now. That's what this book reminds me of. It's, uh, it's full of those scenes. Uh, they're really out of place and they seem like they're just kind of shoved in there. Just kind of like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? But they don't push the story one way or the other. Uh, and then because the reader has no idea why this cool scene, like uh, the guy getting handed his sword and he's just like time froze and they're handing the sword off and it's like, oh. And you're like, why is that important? You have to actually explain why these things are important way before they happen. So that when they happen, the reader's like, well, that's pretty cool. He got his whatever. Um, so you just become frustrated because you think, well, the author knows this is cool, but I don't. I have no idea why. So, And then, of course, there's random fighting. You know it's a bad deal when the author is writing it and he... And he goes, you can just see it. Boy, this is boring. This is a boring scene. The readers are going to be bored, so I'm just going to throw in some random fighting here. That'll make it cool. It doesn't. It just becomes random fighting. Uh, and it, you know, maybe it would have been okay if the random fighting with a cool guy with a sword, he's supposed to be like really great with a sword, wasn't always like beat the heck up at the end. It's like, I don't know. The magic system itself is also ill-defined. Of course, there's this guy that can't shoot his bow for some reason. Some sort of magic block that's never explained. Uh, what's his point in life? I don't know. Uh, you've got the, the guy with the magic cool sword who can't fight. What's that about? And then you've got this character, Wendra, who's doing song magic. And, you know, song magic's been done before, you know, and even in a science fiction sense with Crystal Singer by uh, McCaffrey. But, uh, so you can do it. And the concept is a cool concept that uh, Aurelian lays out, kind of, almost, sort of, 
uh, if you try to grab hold of something. But does that make Wonder the central character? Who knows? Who knows which one of those three is the central character? I have no clue. Or is it their chef, or, you know, their mentor? Is he the main character? I don't know. Um, and it also, it frustrated me that there's no learning done in their skills. It's just when they're written into a corner and you need a way out, then it's time for a cool magic. Just something to happen. Cool that could let me keep writing this jumbled story. Um, and the character's like, I can do this? Who knew? Like, come on. All right? So, and that kind of leads to my major point. This whole story is disconnected and disjointed. Uh, it's all over the place. There's fantasy tropes just kind of shoved in there. Like, how many can we shove into this, uh, this story? And it seems to me like it's really the first draft of a first novel that's never been looked at by an editor. Uh, and I suspect that that's why uh, this is the definitive author's copy, is because Tor realized that uh, it, Peter might not be a great story plotter or writer yet. He has a lot of development to go. But he's obviously a good sales uh, person. He pitched his stories, and Tor bought into like three books like this. Uh, and, but I think they realized afterwards it really wasn't a good book, and they tried to... Uh, whittle it down, do what an editor would actually do to a story, and then kind of kick it out and hope for the best. Uh, it's sloppy work. You know, and I really, I really wanted to like this book because, you know, the cover art, which I showed you, is pretty cool. Uh, the map art is good, and you can see that Tor invested in that book design, which is important. And Tor is actually one of my favorite uh, fantasy publishers. I... They normally have a very high standard on their fantasy, and this just, uh, it just doesn't meet that mark. Um, now, I will say one kind of nice thing about it. Uh, uh, Peter's actual technical writing is not that horrible. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad. Um, it's just there's no, there's no tight story. There's no story arc. There's no... I mean, I'm beating that horse to death. Um, but I guess to try to keep an open mind, I might pick up another book of uh, Aurelian's sometime in the future. Not from this series, though, because this series is blown. It's, it's destroyed by the first book. Uh, I don't see how he could dig his way out of that chasm. Uh, but he does have some skill with basic writing, and uh, to give him the benefit of the doubt... Maybe his uh, fourth or fifth book, he will have learned something about plot uh, and a tight storyline, and uh, then it might be worth reading. So I'll give the guy a break. But for this book, so it's 434 tiny print pages. At the end, I had no feeling for the story, didn't care about any of the characters, and, you know, I really just wanted to chuck this book across the room while I was reading it. It was so frustrating to read. Uh, I was talking to it like it was a living person, criticizing it while I was reading it, uh, going, oh my god, I can't believe he did that. Or, uh, um, I just wanted to burn this book. I mean, come on, Tor. You did this guy, Peter Aurelian, a real disservice when you didn't stick to your standards and edit the bejesus out of this book or forego his personal charms and just uh, not publish this book. She should have said no. And I'll just point out a couple of things. There's uh, two misleading, <laughs> I think they're misleading, uh, reviews of this book. The first one is a fine deb debut by Brian Sanderson right there. By the way, I think Brian Sanderson's a little bit overrated. Uh, he writes tracet, uh, classic uh, pulp for the most part, uh, and it's not necessarily all that good. Um, and then there's the bit on the back by Literary Journal, uh, which says this is some sort of new grand fantasy in the likes of uh, Jordan, Goodkind, and McKiernan. By the way, I don't like McKiernan's books. They drove me crazy with that language, like brave he was, sad he was, trying to be Tolkien-ish, and honestly, it was just bad it was, those three books. Uh, but it raises a point. You know, these publishing houses, they've always paid for book reviews. And uh, the trick is is that the book reviewer has to maintain some credibility. 
Uh, so they have to be honest. And that's where the balance is supposed to be at. And literary library journal, I'm not going to believe anything you tell me from now on because, you know, this book wasn't just okay. It was just, it was just bad. And you said it's this great, great book. So real disappointment that you can't uh, maintain your own standards there. Uh, library journal. Anyway, <laughs> all that said, uh, I'd like to thank you all for stopping by. I'm sorry I don't have any of my kit. I moved across the world to India, so I'm shooting this on my uh, MacBook Air. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll get my kit like within the next uh, 45 days and I'll get it unpacked and we'll go back to a little bit better quality video. So anyway, visit me on Goodreads and hey, I set up my own Facebook page. I'll put those links down below. Uh, so stop by. Uh, like and share my video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And of course, uh, with all that said, I will see you all next time.